Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we're going to be continuing with the item system tutorial series. Last video, we made the code for the hotbar system. And now, of course, we've got to do the UI, which is the fun part, I guess, maybe. Um, so we've got to set up the background and the slot holder. And then once we've got all the slots, we need to attach the code that we wrote last video, uh, drag in all the exposed variables like the text component, the image component, and stuff like that. And then we have to obviously set up the event so that just like when the event inventory listens for the item updated event we also need to make the hotbar do so as well to update and then we have to obviously test it by adding some items to our hotbar attaching sorry adding some items to our inventory attaching them to our hotbar moving them around and so on and then um, that's pretty much going to be it for this video it might be quite a short one and then the next video we'll move on to start coding the next system we want to do whether that's going to be like a vendor system or whatever I haven't quite decided yet so we'll wait for the next video for that um, but feel free to give ideas below and I'll listen to those ideas perhaps and uh, see, just see what you guys want to make because obviously this can go in any direction it's a it's an item system it's very generic right you've got uh, inventory and hotbar is pretty much what every game has, but some don't even have hotbar, some just have like inventories. Uh, so then on top of that, what do you want? You know, some games will want vendors, some will want um, items that you can like equip to a character select screen so you can display what armor and weapons you've got, and then like be able to use uh, items on your hotbar. So it can go in any direction. Um, I think what I'll end up doing is it won't probably go on for too many videos this series, and then the different things people want, like for example, how to use abilities off your hotbar with the system and attach them. That could be its own mini series to do with like making abilities and like a, a component system for designing abilities. I kind of already did that in the past with the like um, creating abilities from games system. So I could actually go back to that using our new system. This could be like the 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 base system I build on top of for like games. I think that'd be a pretty cool idea. Um, I'll have a think about that. But anyway, before we get into the video, I'd like to thank my patrons. With special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Thomas Huster, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, then the link to my Patreon is down below. Uh, if you can't, then it would mean a lot if you could either subscribe to the channel, uh, follow me on Twitch, all of the above. There's all the links to my social medias down below. So um, apart from that, let's get into the video. Okay, so first things first, we'll just start creating the UI object. So I'm going to create an empty game object and call it, you know, just like the inventory UI, I'm going to call it the um, hotbar UI, like so. And then on top of that, well, let's position it there and make it a prefab before we forget. So hotbar UI. Okay, so the hotbar UI is going to have a canvas on it. So UI canvas, obviously. And that canvas is going to be the canvas underscore hotbar. UI, or did I just call that inventory one? Yeah, I just call it inventory, uh, hotbar, sorry. And over here, we want to do obviously scale with screen size 1920 by 1080, match height. Uh, it's the hotbar, so we do need a graphic ray caster so we can click on it. And I'm going to set the sort order to 100. That's so it renders underneath the inventory and the info UI. You just want to make sure that when you set the scaling, the sorting orders on your things, keep a note of them somewhere else and it's easier to check them. Like I have usually a Trello page of like a list of all the different orders so that when I make a new piece of UI, I have to decide, well, what do I want it to go between? Like, what do I want it to render on top of but not above something else and so on? Um, I think it definitely makes sense the inventory is on top of the hotbar. So that's all that really matters here. And the reason I do it in big numbers, like in the hundreds, is because if you did it like increments of one, so if you did like sort order four, five, six, then you wanted something between, you know, five and six. I don't think you can even do decimals. And even if you could, it would be, no, you can't do decimals. It would be awkward to work with anyway. So that's why I do it in big numbers. But that, that's just a side, uh, an aside. Next, we're going to need the background for the hotbar. So we can add a... Um, another game object and I'm gonna position this at the bottom of the screen so I've already got like the numbers on my game for what I want so I'm gonna say the anchor type is the bottom center and it's gonna be um, pos y of 50 as long as the the y pos is half of the height then it should be good and we put 900 on the width I'm actually gonna go into this so you can see so if you look like that that's where I want the hotbar to be uh, like so it's up to you. you you decide how you want it to go Obviously, we need to end up having it so the inventory can be open and closed, whereas the hotbar is usually always open, so I'll do that in a different video. Um, I feel like all of these settings are fine. So now on the background, we want to add an image component. I'm going to make it the same uh, gray that I've used in the past. I don't even know if that's the same gray. It's a different gray. Oh, well, uh, it doesn't matter. Why, why did I make that full screen? 
Anyway, I might just go grab that gray, or should I keep it a different gray? Why? I don't know. I don't care. Okay, let's add a horizontal layout component so that we can obviously lay out the slots horizontally. Um, I'm going to want a padding of 10 on every side. I think that looks good. And a spacing of 10. It aligns with the middle center. And we match width and height. And what that'll do is it'll actually change the size of the slots to fit accordingly. But um, we're also going to be putting on... And we just need to make sure that the width and the height's the same, basically. So I want to now create a hot bar slot. Let's call this um, the like background underscore hot bar. I think I did the same for the inventory, right? Yeah. So on here we need to make a slot, a hot bar slot. We need to make ten of them. So let's make an empty game object. We'll go to prefabs, and we'll call it slot underscore hot bar. We're going to make that a prefab. So now I can duplicate and make it so there's 10 of them. Um, that's 11. So there's 10 of them now. Uh, let's just call it slots hotbar. Like so. And now you can see we've got all the slots down here, like so. And now if we just edit one of the slots and then press apply, all of them get it, obviously. So we want a slot to have an image component on it. Now I'm just going to make it like have a black background. I don't know. You can do the design for your own. Um, we're going to attach the hotbar slot script to it that we wrote last video. And now we need to link everything up, but we haven't actually got it all yet. Um, but one thing we definitely want to do is listen for a void event. So void listener uh, for the on inventory items updated event. And when inventory items are updated, we want to say hotbar slot dot update slot UI. Apply. They've all got it. All right, next we want to um, go to the child. So we're going to open it up. So inside the hotbar slot, what do we have? Well, we have another um, image on top of that. So we're going to have a UI image. And this image is going to have a stretch like so. It looks weird in here. Let's go back into the, the scene view anyway. Okay, so we've got this image on top of it, but it should have a padding of some sort, so this image is going to be what we replace with the icon of the slot thing. Whatever we put in the slot is what's going to go there. For now, I'll just set it to none. We want to disable that image by default and only enable it in code when there's actually an item in the slot. Uh, so yeah, I've put five padding on every side. We want to add, as well as an image, a canvas group to it uh, and a layout element, just like we do with the inventory. Uh, when we're dragging stuff around, we don't want it to mess up our thing. So we say ignore layout, which means when we uh, change it on the hierarchy and we're moving it around, it won't mess everything else up. And then we've made the hotbar item drag handler, just like how we made the inventory item drag handler. And we now need to reference the uh, slot UI, so we drag in the parent. We need to reference the on mouse start and on mouse uh, end hover item. And now that's all done, we can apply it to the hotbar slot. Everything will follow. I'm going to call this image the um, image underscore uh, slot underscore icon, maybe. And then as well as having an item icon, on top of that, we also want um, some more things. So we also want the text for the um, quantity. So I'm going to create a UI text mesh pro text. And this will want to set to be uh, the fallback font, at least I mean, you, you can handle your own fonts. I'm going to say uh, bold. I want to auto size it in case um, like you have tons of an item. I still want it to fit inside the box. I'll just shrink it. Um, I say left aligned and bottom aligned. And that's pretty much all the settings on there. We just need to set the actual position now. So I'm going to say uh, stretch the anchors and have a top of 40, a right of 2.5, and a bottom of minus 2.5. Now this is just, just what I found worked when I did it. So if I did that as like x10 or something, or 10, I don't know if I did x or just a number. Um, maybe the, the right padding could actually be zero. Let me just have a look at that. Oh, and the bottom padding. So the problem with the bottom padding actually is... Um, just with my font, even if I tell it to align at the bottom, 
for some reason it still um, does that, so I actually have to manually tell it, like, if I wanted that to be the bottom, then I'd have to go there. It's just a slight annoyance. So I can put, like, minus 5. I'll leave you guys to, to fiddle with your UI, but I'm happy with that for now. I'm going to leave that blank. Okay, and then we'll call this the uh, text underscore item underscore, like, slot quantity. I'm just being very over the top with uh, how I name things, just so it's very... So when I want to go find in my scene the, you know, quantity for the sl item slot, you know, you can find that easily. That's my uh, idea for that, anyway. And then we also will add cooldown UI, but not yet, because that's not... We've not included the code for that. So let's now go back to the hotbar slot and say override apply. So now all the slots have that. And now we need to actually link up on this code here that we um, attach for the hotbar slot. We need to drag in the item icon image, which is just the child of that. Reference to the inventory, which is a scriptable object. And reference to the quantity text, which is there. We're going to override apply. So now they all have reference to that. We can now apply the actual parent, so that's done. And now, possibly, hopefully, if we test, we'll see if it works. And if it doesn't, then we can fix it, obviously. So let's um, add to the inventory, right? So we're going we're gonna to go to the inventory. We're going to say, yep, test add. Now, if I drag this onto my hotbar, notice how it also tells me there what item I've got, because I've got the um, script on it. If I drag it around, obviously, it works. And I can actually put it on two slots. And obviously, it just, you know shows in the two slots. If I drag it out, instead of, if I drag it out of here, it says, are you sure you want to destroy 4x health potion? If you drag it out of here, it just goes away because it, it's just a reference. This isn't actually the object. And if I um, put that there and I keep adding, as soon as it goes into the other slot, obviously I've got five and three. But here we use the function for get total count, which is eight. So it actually does display the full count there. And if I keep going, obviously it'll keep updating like that. So I've got 12 there, 16 and so on. So this is working pretty well. That's just how you want it to be. Obviously, it tells you the max stacks five on there, but that's just for the inventory, obviously, where we store the item. If I delete five, that goes down by five, and obviously, in here, I can still move them around, and so on. So that's pretty much it for this video, honestly. Obviously, I said I'll keep it short. I will do something else just to end off the video. I'll show you the rarity thing I said I was going to implement at some point. I have done it in a previous video, but I'm going to re-implement it now. So we can quickly do that, just add a bit more data to our slot. I might also jiggle around the UI a bit. I'm not going to do that on camera. Uh, if you want to get the UI changes I do and all that stuff, the link to this is in my GitHub. You know, you can download this project and just go delve into it if you want. But yeah, I'm just going to do a bit of fiddling around, and then we'll get into the rarities. Okay, so I've just created a class for rarity. Obviously, just go into Unity, create a new C Sharp script. I've put it in my items folder and namespace. But that's all I've done. We want to make this a scriptable object. We want to be able to actually instantiate it in our project. So we want to create asset menu. Um, we'll call the file name new rarity. And we'll call the menu name uh, items slash rarity. And then down here, what data does a rarity have? Well, I'm just going to copy and paste it in because there's no point writing it out again. We've got the uh, name, so new rarity name, text color, so that's obviously what it's going to appear as on the um, UI when it displays this text. And then uh, we have getters so that we obviously can't change the data, we can only reference it, which is good. So we reference the name and the text color by returning it. And to be honest, I actually prefer now to write it like this more of the time, just the simple getters like that. If it's a getter, you just do equals arrow. And then it's just saying when you call name, you return name. But obviously, you can't set to name. You can only get to name, which is good. You could equally just write an actual get function, but it's just too much. It's effort. Why, why would you write a get function when you can just write that? So that's the rarity class. And now we want to move back to our item class. So if I go to items, a hotbar item doesn't necessarily have a rarity, but an inventory item does. Okay. So here we've got colored name. And currently, we would just return name because I haven't actually got around to doing that. So what we want to do is we want to um, use the rarity color around the text, essentially. So at the top here, we can say uh, we have a serialized field private rarity. So just the rarity. And then for the colored name, what we want to do is we want to say, well, the, sh the hex color, we have to get the hex color, which is color utility dot to HTML string RGB and we pass in rarity dot text color 
So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking in the color that we've set in rarity and converting it into um, hex code, which is the way that it can display it in the text element. And then we want to actually return the string. So we'll say color equals hashtag hex color close tag. So that's going to make any text after that be the color. So we're going to pass in the name of the item. So that's going to be in the color we decide. And then we can close the color tag to make sure that anything after that isn't colored. So only the text is colored for the name. So now we can reference colored name in places. We also probably want to reference the rarity in certain places. So maybe we'll say public rarity, rarity returns rarity, like so. Okay, so what we're going to do in the string builder is we want to add before it uh, builder.append. This is for the consumable item. Rarity.name.append line, like so. Uh, this is right. Wait, oops, this is meant to be append line. Color is green, use, blah, 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 max stack, sell price, gold, builder to string. Okay, so now what should happen is if we, yep, save all, go back to Unity. We'll make a folder at the root of our project. It doesn't matter really where you put this. And we'll call this rarities. Then here we can make a new items rarity. and just call it like rarity underscore common. And you get where I'm going with this. So common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary. So now I'm just going to go through these and rename these. I'll speed up the video while I do this. And then also I'll just set the colors for each of these rarities and the names up here. So you can do this at your own pace. Okay, so I've set all those rarities. It really doesn't matter, you know, you can tweak the colors to get the exact one you want. The point is now when we have an item, so for example, if we go to our game data, no wait, where have we put items? Resources, items, consumables. Now it asks for a rarity, so I'm gonna say, well, a health potion, is, or a consumable test health potion, whatever, is actually a, a common item, right? So if I said it was common and press play, and then I added it to my inventory, don't worry, we'll, we'll add easier ways to add stuff to the, to the inventory soon. But if I mouse over it now, the health potion text is in gray. It's quite hard to see. And it says common under it. So it says health potion, common. Now, if I uh, went back to that health potion and I said, actually, you're rare. Now, when I play the game and add it to my inventory, as you probably guess, the text will now be blue for it. So... Um, you see how it's blue there? Actually, wait, I've got an idea. I'm pretty sure because it's like a scriptable object. If I just changed it live here, it would actually change it on here. Yeah, so it's health potion yellowy orange, which is usually legendary. Uncommon, it's now green. I don't like the green with the then the green use text. I don't know. You can sort that out yourself. Um, I've got epic, which is purple, and so on. Common, which is grey. So I might say, oh, this health potion is, yeah, it's a common item usually. So there you go, and you can delete it. And also you'll notice that if we, um, or it should at least, if I make it legendary and then try and drag it out, the text color when it's saying what you want to destroy is legendary colored. So that obviously indicates to you, wait a second, I'm destroying a legendary item, am, am I sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for the next video in the series. Feel free to leave ideas below about what kind of game dev stuff you want me to cover or what kind of videos you want to see, because I'm all open ears. Um, obviously, yep, check out all my social medias and help support me if you can, if you'd like to do so. Um, but apart from that, I'll see you in the next video, and goodbye.